We are back with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Elizabeth Villanueva, one of two Teachers of the Year for 2016 for the Sacramento City Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us you know, where you teach and tell us all that you teach. Okay. <clears throat> I teach at Luther Burbank High School um, in South Sacramento. This was my 11th year teaching there. It has been my only full-time te teaching position, and I love it. Mm. It's, it's great to be there. So tell me all the subjects you teach, because you teach I, multiple classes. Yes, I do. Um, I teach pre-IB1, um, that is the, for the International Baccalaureate Program, pre-IB1, pre-IB2, and those are for beginners, and then I teach Spanish for native speakers, levels three, three, uh, two, three, uh, AP Spanish, and I teach an after-school program, um, a group of uh, Latina students known as New Age Latinas Leadership Class. First, let's talk about that. Tell me what that class is all about and why it's important. Well, I, it's been nine years ago. Nine years ago, um, a group of um, teachers got together and said, "Liz, why don't you teach this class?" The main fo focus on that um, at the beginning was to get a group of students who were high risk. Um, they were, they were in, related to gangs and, and other activities. And the main purpose was to get them to graduate from high school. Mm -hmm. And um, we did that, and as, it con as I continue teaching it, now it's more leadership. And, and I'm very, very proud to say that um, this past year, out of the um, 10 or so students who graduated from New York Latinas, seven of them went to uh, different colleges, UC mm -hmm. Davis, Sac State, Community College, and the, the concentration has uh, become different, but it's still uh, education. It's not just high school anymore, it's college, and it's more than that, it's to be better. Why do you think that segment of the population has kind of been ignored as far as leadership teaching and why is there such a, a need in that area? I will say that uh, we as human beings, we need um, to create a strong identity and I think the lack of many leaders, um, Latino leaders I will say, it's, it, it has a great impact but it's, it's not just that. I think that um, whoever, it goes beyond race, it goes beyond skin color, whoever cares for another person I'm sure that person is going to impact in a very positive way the student or whoever it's mentoring. And um, it does what has happened in my class. I care deeply for my students in general. And, um, and I just love how they, they get the resources, the skills. They learn the skills to get organized, to do a community service, to look for mentors, to look for um, help. And uh, they love that. And also, one of the things that we do in Yes Latinas, I we fundraise money to go to different colleges, and just to be exposed. Many of them have never been out of Sacramento. Many of them have never been in a college. They don't even know what it is, and they start wondering and dreaming. Oh, what if mm -hmm. I go to this college? And many of them, many of their parents have never been there either. That is my situation. My mom doesn't have a. a uh, she had never been to a school, okay? And, um, and I think that is very important. With, in collaboration also with another program that we have in our school, Parent University, that concentrate on parents and they do a college trip as well. And just to see, for my students to see you know, and, to, and to go together, it's like, wow, it's possible. And um, that is very important. Beyond leadership, I think is the, the concentration on dreams and hopes it's that is possible it's been possible for me and I know it. for a lot and so for a lot of the students who come to you for that class they don't really realize that those opportunities are available to them because it, perhaps they have never heard that mm -hmm. is possible mm -hmm. and many times they just come to this class because oh it's niche Latinas and it's a great opportunity to be with another uh, students with the same I identity and ethnic background Something else what, that we do in that class that I learned is uh, health and wellness. For that reason, I, I, have, I have incorporated a yoga class, 
and that helps them to learn abilities on to meditate, how to meditate, how to eat healthy. And um, I remember in one of my trips to Nicaragua, I went to this restaurant that is called Ola Verde, Green Wave, and the owner is from Stockton. And mm -hmm. she, she was a professor at, at Pacific University. Uh, and I asked, oh, you know, I have this class. And she told me this. If you teach the students to have control in the kitchen, that's the most powerful skill they're going to have because eating is everything. The mm. importance of eating healthy. Interesting. Yeah. So, and I think it is in our culture, in any culture, it is very important to know that, to have control over what we eat. So you also talked about uh, teaching a, a class for native Spanish speakers. Yes. Explain how that's different from uh, <coughs> a conventional Spanish language class. Very interesting. When I was, uh, when I was in college, I was an assistant, um, a teacher assistant for a Spanish class. And it was a mixed class. And I noticed that the Spanish teachers were failing the class because they were, they were thought like, they were um, being taught, oh, go ahead and repeat mama. And they knew how to say mama, papa. They spoke the language. And that was very interesting. I said, why? So it is very important to look at the needs of the students. The Spanish teacher, the Spanish students, they already know how to use the language. Might not be in the academic way, but they need that. They need the resources, how to learn the academic language. Versus the other, uh, the other classes, they knew how to construct the language. The other students, they know already. They have the skills. They have been born and raised with the language. So they know so, how to converse with it, but they might not be able to, to, to write, write it, properly. And to write it, to read it. Many times they read Spanish as if they were reading English because they have, not been, they have never been instructed how to read it. And they don't even know how to pronounce the vowels. In Spanish, the vowels always have the same sound, A, E, E, O, U. And if they know that, those are the, the, the skills that they need. Because if they know how to use their own language, they're going to be even more successful in English. And I know it because that happened to me. So why did you decide to become a teacher? <laughs> because I realized that um, there were a lot of students like in my situation. I came to the US when I was almost 18 years old, and I didn't know any English. And, um, it was one teacher who planted the seed in me that I, I could do it, that I was smart. But I felt very, um, I didn't feel smart at all, first of all, because I didn't know the language. And when I was in those classes, I was very lost, and I said, I'm almost 18, I'm almost an adult, and here I am, like, learning like a baby. Mm -hmm. And I felt that disconnection. And when I was in college working as a teacher assistant, I realized that the disconnect, I said, Maybe I can do this. And then I remember my teacher. And I just love it. I, it's and how do you like connecting with those students and teaching them the language? It's so enriching. It enriches my life in general, my personal, my professional life, intellectually. It, uh, it makes me want um, to learn more, to be, to be better at what I do, because I have students who are depending on me. And if I don't get better, what's going to happen to my students? So I just love that. So you feel responsible for them almost. I do, in yeah. a way I do, but I, but I love it. <laughs> and I always tell them, challenge me. And when they challenge me, oh, it's, it's just another way to get motivated, to continue striving for what I believe, for what I do. So you feel that you motivate the students, yet they motivate you. Definitely. It's something reciprocal, and that's what I say. Teaching and learning is reciprocal. And I tell them, you know, you're here, but you're, you're teaching me so much. I'm not a teacher. I'm another student. And in, with them, it's like, yeah, I have a specific knowledge in this area, but you have so much that you don't know how much you enrich my life. I say, well, congratulations to you. Oh, thank you. We appreciate you. you speaking with us. We've been speaking with Elizabeth Villanueva, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the Sacramento City Unified School District. Congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>